Well, ladies and gentlemen, um, I will now introduce to you the last team of the day. So uh, here's the Mechanical Engineering 2012 Aero Design Team. Okay, good afternoon. We are team number 14. We are the 2012 Aero Design Team. Starting from your left to your right, we have Ryan Vogt, Shea Raider, Ryan Green, Mike Chiasi, and I'm Sean Day. Faculty advisor for this year's project is uh, Dr. Slomiana. Our course screener coordinator is Professor Marcus. Our industrial advisors include Mr. Bevan, Ms. Skeen, Mr. Noel, Mr. Harding, Mr. Addis, Mr. Garmset, Mr. Wisner, and Mr. Kedge. Our sponsors for this year's project include the Boeing Company, Ms. Skeen, Weiner School of Engineering, SolidWorks, and Dr. Siasi. The objectives of our project was to design, fabricate, and test remote control plane within the budget and design constraints. We are also to participate in the 2012 SAE Air Design Competition with the goal of maximizing the number of flights and uh, payloads. The scope for our project includes research into aerodynamics, materials, plane configurations, next, designs. First, a conceptual design, moving on to the preliminary design, finally, final design. And then after we clear our design, we are start to start fabrication, and after fabrication is testing, evaluation, <coughs> any necessary modifications if needed. We are start Speaking in the competition located in Marietta, Georgia, from May 27th to the May Due to the nature of our project, there are strict design constraints. These constraints include an overall length has to be less than 225 inches, an overall weight must be less than 55 pounds. We have specific, specific uh, engine and radio we have to use, and also no fiber reinforced plastic, and there are strict payload uh, constraints. Now I'm going to pass it on to Mike to discuss the schedule and budget. <coughs> Thank you, Sean. In order to meet the project goals, the main tasks were identified and the schedule was developed over the course of two semesters. Research began in early September and continued through the end of winter break. The design phase began in mid-September and continued on to mid-March. Procurement ran from the end of October also to mid-March. And fabrication went from the beginning of December to the end of March. After the design was completed, initial testing began on construction materials, and when the plane was, was assembled, flight tests were performed in, in order to determine the plane's performance, and after each test, evaluations were performed in order to make sure any <coughs> modifications were needed. We've also written several reports throughout the semester, including an additional report specifically for the SAE competition, and finally, at the end of the month, we have the SAE design competition in Marietta, Georgia. As with, all, as with all projects, a budget had to be prepared. Our total approved budget is $5,975, the majority of which consists of a competition, which is, as of now, an estimated $4,050. This is due to the fact that the competition consists of travel, registration, and AMA membership expenses. We are still working on new parts and materials, so when we return from the competition, the final budget will be determined, although in our, in our calculations, we prove that we will return on the budget. As we're all mechanical engineers, initial research had to be conducted into the fundamentals of aerodynamics. The four forces that act on any flying body are lift, drag, thrust, and of course weight. The first force lift is caused by a pressure differential when air on top of an airfoil or wing moves faster than the air on the bottom of the wing. This is what allows the aircraft to get off the ground. Lift is a function of air density, square velocity, and surface area, and most importantly, lift coefficient, because the lift coefficient depends on the airfoil that is selected. As, as with all aircraft, lift must be greater than or equal to the weight in order for the aircraft to take off. The second force drag is a force that is created by all parts of an airplane while in flight. It consists of zero lift and induced drag, and throughout the project, our efforts were to minimize drag as much as possible in order to create a more efficient aircraft. Drag is similar to lift in terms of as a function of air density, square velocity, and surface area, with the notable exception of drag coefficient, which is also <coughs> important because that is also dependent upon the airflow that is selected. Finally, the, the last force, thrust, is the force that overcomes drag. In order to have steady and level flight, thrust must always be greater than drag in order for the airplane to keep flying. Another important aspect of our research was stability and control. On the top left, you can see examples of unstable, neutrally stable, and stable flight. In order to have a stable aircraft, it must be able to correct itself in mid-flight or have a self-correct heading. It must also have a well-placed center of gravity in order to help provide pitching stability. It must also have a set dihedral in the wing to, to help with rolling stability. Several control surfaces were also implemented in order to make the aircraft easier to control while in flight. These consist of ailerons, which control the roll, 
flaps, which help generate more lift, the elevator in the tail, which controls the pitching moment, and the rudder, which controls the yaw. After extensive research into aerodynamics, we began to look at several different airfoils, along with their advantages and disadvantages, and several configurations for the airplane we consider of the various parts. For example, monoplane versus biplane, high wing versus low wing configuration, and we also looked at the H tail and the conventional tail, and finally, we were also looking at different propellers to select. These were all implemented in the final design, in the preliminary design, which will now be discussed by Brian. Thank you, Mike. Our preliminary design is a monoplane with an overall dimensions of 220 inches. Our main wing being a Douglas LA203A airfoil with a span of 117 <coughs> inches and a cord length of 17. Our vertical and horizontal stabilizer being an H tail with an NACA0008 airfoil and a span of 32 inches. Our fuselage with a nose mounted engine and also a conventional tail arm. Our landing gear was designed to take a 55 pound rough landing and also flexible to dissipate energy. To, max, to optimize our preliminary design, several preliminary tests were done. Three of them being a thrust test, a materials test, and a control test. Thrust test was to determine or select a suitable prop, a propeller. Several propellers were tested in our wind tunnel and a APC 13 by six prop propeller was selected because of its high, high, high static thrust and uh, steady curve. A materials test was done to find, our, to find an ultimate, uh, ultimate strength and density for our plane. We decided on balsam basswood because of its high strength weight ratio. A control, a control test was done to determine if our force our, for, from, our state, from our servos could provide enough force to control our uh, control, sur us, control surfaces. Now, Shay will, uh, Shay will show our performance predictions. Thank you, Brian. Here we have our payload prediction board. This graph dem demonstrates the distance our plane will be able to take off with a maximum gross weight. There's two lines up there. We've got no flaps, the red line, and flaps with the blue line. As you can see, flaps greatly reduce the airplane, and this is why we have chosen flaps. We were able to predict that our plane will be able to take off within the 200 feet with a maximum gross weight of 41.5 pounds and a plane weight of 13.8 pounds. After the preliminary production, our construction was able to begin. Different materials were chosen based off of the forces that the members of the airplane would take. These different materials included balsa wood, basswood, poplar, plywood, and aluminum for the landing gear. We created our entire aircraft within SOLIDWORKS, which allowed for ease of construction later on. We used scroll saws for precise cutting, as well as table saws and band saws. After our construction, we were able to start a preliminary flight test. This flight test began with control testing, as well as taxi testing, and then finally the flight test. We had four very <coughs> successful flights. However, we did notice that there was a ballooning problem. This was due to a lack of down thrust and tail angle <coughs> incidents. Like I said before, we had four successful flights and we were able to lift seven pounds of cargo. However, we were not able to lift more because of the soft runway, which would not be an issue in Marriott, Georgia. The modifications based off of the preliminary flight test were to increase <coughs> tail incidence from zero to one degrees and also incorporate two degree engine down, engine down wash. This is hope to improve the <coughs> problem we had. We also wanted to add main wind wire shuts for heavier loads and also use wider modified wheels. And now Ryan's going to talk about the final design. <coughs> Thank you, Shane. With these modifications, we are able to move on to our final design. In the upper left, you can see a 3D model of our final design, and below its counterpart as physical structure. The main wing consists of a Douglas LA203 airflow <coughs> with a wingspan of 117 inches. The tail configuration is that of an H tail with a span of 32 inches. Our overall dimensions are 220.5 inches, which is less than the design constraint of 225. And the final weight of our aircraft was 13.8 pounds. Upon completion of our construction and final design phases, we were able to complete a final weight analysis. This was done using SOLIDWORKS and inputting uh, density functions. Uh, you, this table depicts different uh, components of the aircraft and the corresponding theoretical and actual weights. You may know that the actual weight is larger than the theoretical weight, and this is due to the fact that we are not able to accurately model monocoat in our 3D model. This is also the reason for the slight variation in the center of gravity. 
In order to ensure structural integrity of our aircraft, different members were uh, analyzed with a finite element analysis advocates. Uh, the fuselage produced a maximum stress of 1.48 KSI and a factor of safety of 3.3. The landing gear produced a maximum stress of 12 KSI and a factor of safety of 3.9. Both of these were uh, deemed sufficient for our design purposes. Final testing went well. As far as empty weight is concerned, the plane took off within 15 feet. It was predicted that it would be 12, and this is due to some rolling friction from the grass runway. It landed within 50 feet and proved to be very stable. As in the preliminary flight, flight testing, stronger and wider wheels were used for the soft runway conditions. To conclude, we would like to say that weight and strength share a crucial balance in this design. Flight testing is essential. CAD modeling serves as a highly efficient design tool, and that finite element analysis allows for more efficient and accurate analysis. To summarize, our objectives have been achieved. A radio-controlled airplane was designed, built, and tested within our, our design constraints, budget, and on schedule, and the plane is ready for the competition. Although we have had great periods of success over the past two semesters, we do have some recommendations for future teams. Most importantly is to research early, and then to use this early research to test early. Use CAD modeling of different members of the plane, and keep it simple wherever possible. We've prepared a short clip of a takeoff and landing during one of our test flights, and this is seven pounds. It will shortly take off, and the video is cut while it's making several circuits in the air. It is now coming in for a landing, and will shortly be on the ground. Before I open the floor to any questions that you may have, just wanted to thank our faculty advisor, Dr. Salomiana, our course coordinators for senior project, all our industrial advisors, and the sponsors of our project. Without you, this wouldn't be possible. This concludes our presentation. I'd like to open the floor to any questions that you may have. Do you, have a, do you have a target payload or a design calculated payload? We sat down and looked at what we can take up and what we feel comfortable with, and we decided around 22 pounds of payload is what the most we'd ever turn. In the back? Yeah, once again, with your flight, um, air density is always important. When you were doing your practice flights, what was the air density, what was the temperature? We didn't necessarily record that, but in our, our calculations, we used uh, sea level density. So it was probably pretty close. As it gets warmer, the air density is going to get thicker. You're going to have a faster risk for early on. Right. We actually did have an analysis where we compared different densities due to altitude, and we didn't note that there is changes because of this. Okay. Um, what was the objective? <laughs> we were actually also told that uh, it's easier to see when flying by uh, Mr. Noah, who was our pilot. Yeah, you can flights. see the orientation yeah. better by the, the, the back. Do we have any other questions? Yes? Did you learn anything? <laughs>